Welcome, family, to yet another service of worship. Let's all stand as we bless God in worship. And this time around, I would like us to start with just a brief prayer of thanksgiving to God. Father, we have a reason to bless your name. We have a reason to stand and declare your goodness. Just as David says, your, 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 your testimonies are my meditation. In the same way we meditate through song as we worship you upon the things you have been to us, the things you are even now, and the things you had promised to be in the future. We bless your holy name as we're standing together as the body of Christ in this hour to bless your name. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. So family, let's join each other throughout our houses to give praise to the Lord our God. May you be blessed as we continue to worship Him. See you later.
so I pray. I will pray. God will answer my prayer. Can we just do this? I, I believe in this same atmosphere of prayer. Can, I don't know what is on your heart. I don't know what you're trusting God for. But one thing I know that whenever we come into the presence of God, anything happens. When God is in a place, he can do anything. Whatever prayer is on your heart tonight, as we sang this song, you just want to open your mouth, just a few seconds. Whatever that thing on your heart is, pray to him right now. I don't know what it is, but I believe in the God that I serve. That he answers prayer. He said, I'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even think or imagine. So imagine the ones that you can even speak or pray about. He will do more. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous are it. Come on, lift your voice, somebody. Just a few seconds. He will answer every prayer of yours tonight. He's a prayer answering God. Somebody have faith tonight. Hey. God will answer my prayer. that people think are impossible to do we know that you are the God of possibilities and therefore with you all things are possible and we know that you are going to do one more time what you said you're going to do do only what you can do and no man can we thank you and we trust you do it one more time
welcome back. Uh, I believe we had a fruitful time of worship. It has energized us, it has encouraged us, and brought so much joy and hope in our lives. As we begin this yet another teaching on finalization mindset or posture, I'm reminded of a scripture that says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. That also tells me that in every season, to be fruitful in it, we need to have the currentness of knowledge and understanding of that particular season. We keep on talking about end of times. Uh, we, took, we keep talking about the end time generation. We, therefore, we talk about finalization. Those two things speaks to finalization. Issue of maturity is an issue of a finalizing state of a believer unqualified rightness, not compromising our position of righteousness. It's a position of finalizing our journey in Christ. Standing to be structures through which God can show His glory. It's part of the end of time that God dreams about. The last one that I want to talk to right now is an immovable sight to the finish or immovable sight of the finish that motivated Christ in his own life. We read that from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That line right there explains to us how Christ positioned himself to deal with the cross. The cross is a life that brought him to a finalizing of his journey in the earth. The cross is a life that was most difficult and most challenging. I can say that because when you read scripture, you hear himself say, if it was according to his will, he would not go to the end of the journey and carry that cross and die for the sins of our lives but he chose the will of God for that. It was quite a difficult last stage of his life. And that cross, the Bible says he endured it. He endured all his difficulties, all his challenges. Um, him not being properly prepared emotionally and otherwise, when he look at the magnitude of the difficulties he will face, what motivated him, the Bible says, it's, the joy that was set before him. The joy that was set before him helped him deal with whatever confronted him. Having sight of that joy energized him, gave him courage even when there would be no courage. It produced strength when he had nothing left. Looking at that finish line actually gave him the context of dealing with whatever he would go through. The Bible says he despised even the shame of it. He despised a temporary situation that undermined who he was. He said he was the son of God. He said he was God himself. He said he had power to do anything. But yeah, he is facing the cross that would seem to prove him otherwise as though being a son of God was no longer a reality. As a matter of fact, when he was hanging on the cross, uh, some mockings came out to say, you said you were a son of God, so prove it. So the Bible says he despised the shame of it. And I think it's something we can pick from. Walking after or chasing after God, being a child of God in the earth, 
carry some kind of shame. But what should help us go beyond the seemingly shameful state of being a child of God, it's having sight of where we are going. This is the essence of our faith. Paul puts it is the hope of all believers. If there is no resurrection of the dead, if there is no eternal life, all of our faith in God, it's a waste of time. But thank God, Christ resurrected from the dead as a sign there's hope for us. We can look at that end and go through whatever life can throw at us and still keep our position. The finalizing posture needs to put us in a place where we understand whatever may confront us should not move us because we have an immovable sight of where we are going. And the Bible says, and now he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's what he was after. So even if it meant he had to go through the cross, he had to go through the shame, his goal was clear. The throne of God, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, motivated him to go through everything. A people walking to the end of their faith or end of their journey must therefore build a pattern of a finalizing attitude after Christ himself. He kept his focus to the end result. He kept his focus to the completeness of all that he came to do in the earth. Completing his walk in the earth meant sitting at the right hand of God on his throne. This means whatever he encountered was now measured or compared with that end goal. That's a very powerful statement to live by. Because everything that confronts men intends to shift men from his end goal. In every context of life, whether it be an academic context, whether it be a business context, whether it be a marriage context or a family context, there are things that confront us time after time. And their intention is to actually shift our focus. But if we can keep the end as our sight, as our focus sight, we are able to discount all these things that confront us and push our way to actually achieve our goal. It's a beautiful sometimes that one could stand and have a great wedding ceremony that celebrates entering into a journey of starting a family or building a marriage. But if that end, end part of the marriage or the family is not well defined, it will be difficult for anyone to deal with all the things that confront people in trying to build a marriage or family. But here we're looking at Christ who was well informed on what the actual goal of his life was. It is by that understanding that he could navigate all things towards achieving that goal. How do we know he understood what was his end goal? We can look at what Psalms chapter 16 speaks to. Verse 8 to 11, the Bible says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol or the place of the dead. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That knowledge motivated him. That knowledge caused him to be able to deal with whatever confronted him in the earth because he knew they are pleasures forevermore at the end of his journey. He knew the fullness of joy comes from walking 
in the presence of God. This scripture then teaches us what was the confidence that was in Christ that made him go through the earth and all the challenges and keep his eye to the finish. The first thing we learn from that scripture, the Bible says, God was at his right hand and he could not be moved. He could face death because he knew God was at his right hand. He could not be moved. Having that understanding so he could face the cross because he knew he could not be moved. Today as believers, God keep on saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But most of the time when we face difficult situations, we tend to forget he had promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. But that understanding can have, can, can have us keep a peaceful attitude and mind in the midst of a storm or a crisis such as we're facing today. Christ was content in his heart and rejoiced in his reality that is founded in God. The Lord was the definer of his life. Nothing in the earth could take that away from him. He knew that that gave him a motivation to face whatever was challenging him. He knew his flesh also will rest in hope and not in corruption. He knew the Lord would not leave him or leave his body. The Bible says he knew the Lord will not leave his soul in Sheol, the place of death. His flesh would not be left in corruption, but he will take up an incorruptible flesh. He knew God would not allow him to see corruption as I'm saying. Instead, the Lord will show him the path of life. He knew in the presence of God there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Knowing what lies at the end of our journey, it's what keeps us serving God. Yes, the context of our earth is that we should be able to live day after day uh, by certain things that define earthly life, like finances and all kinds of stuff. But we go through these things with an immovable sight of the finish line. It is at the end of our journey where the Bible is very clear that we will find pleasures forevermore. These promises of God are not fake. They are very true. We have testimonies of such even when we walk in the earth. Keeping our faith alive in God always gets challenged. But when we are able to look at what it means to be a child of God and then confront whatever confronts us with that understanding, we always break ourselves into places of pleasure, places of joy continuously. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 8 to 11. The Bible says, And being found in appearance as a man, here we're talking about Christ who came out of a dimension of being God to a dimension of being a human being. The Bible says he humbled himself. It was a humbling position for him. And on top of that, he became obedient to take that form, but also to do the things that God had called him to do. To the point of death, even the death of the cross. This is describing a standard for us to can complete what God has sent us to do. Position of humility, humbling ourselves, taking a position that God has ordained for us, is called for us. Become obedient in that particular position to the point of death. In other words, of losing all our control and our self-preferences uh, to the point of death. Even the death of the cross, the death that comes upon the assignment we have, not only generic, but even to the point of the death of, cro of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. Going through that humbling state of life, after it comes an exaltation, God has highly exalted him, given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. <clears throat> then we understand he's talking about the name as an authority here, giving him a name that carries such 
authority and power such that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that truly Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God is very clear about the end of our faith too. We're reading about the end of Christ's faith, what motivated him to measure and compare the context of his life or the context of everything that confronted him with the end goal. And I'm saying today, we need an immovable side to the finish to can deal with all the things that confront us like the things that confronted Christ. God is very clear about the end of our faith, which is a place of a final reward, the Bible says. Place of a final reward. We will be rewarded for all the hard work we put in, for all the stubborn faith we, we maintain throughout the things that challenge us. It's a place of true peace, a place of eternal justice and eternal joy. Those are the things that God has promised, or some of the things that God has promised at the end of our journey. We look at Daniel chapter 12, for example, verse 2 to 3, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. It is important to have the sight of the finish, even in the midst of us doing missionary work, uh, turning people unto righteousness, winning souls and discipling people and all of that. The Bible teaches us while we do all of that good work, we should be motivated by the end of our faith, a place where God has such a great dream about it that we will come to. In Luke 18, 29 and 30, we also hear the Bible says, And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold or manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting that's the side of the finish and God is putting it in two parts that keeping our position in Christ has a benefit in this life and also it has a benefit in the life to come that can motivate any one of us to understand when the enemy attacks a person, he's after the end. He's after the reward side of things. He's after the manifold blessings of God in this current life and the life to come. That's all the enemy does. And if we can master that, we'll be able to really deal with the things that confront our faith. When we understand the enemy comes, as the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13, when the weight comes, because of the weight, the enemy then comes. Because he knows the weight carries life, the weight carries power. The weight is our hope, the weight is our peace, the weight is our joy. If we can live in the word, we will truly experience peace, we will truly experience joy. And there's no better life than a life that has hope for tomorrow. And it's only in the word of God that we are promised life everlasting, hope for tomorrow. So child of God, stand and walk today. Walk regardless of what confronts you. I sometimes put it in a form of looking at a context that I should live by. The completeness of any context of my life, it's not only what comes naturally, but also what comes spiritually. So anything that comes and hit my life, I have to analyze it both in terms of what it means naturally but also in terms of what it means spiritually. 
if we're not away, able to make that comparison, we can easily be captured by the things of the flesh. The last scripture I want to look at is Revelation 3, verse 20 to 21. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Same reward that God gave Christ, sitting on the throne of God. Revelation 3 tells us that's what's awaiting us. It's a beautiful place that God has prepared for the children of God, both in the earth and beyond. Standing and keeping our finalization posture brings us to a place of reward. So let's keep on moving. Let's keep on standing, knowing that this part of life to finalize all that God has called us to do requires us to stand a position not compromising anything, but keep our position in God, we will come to a place of a reward. May the Holy Spirit use this word to build so much strength in us, to can confront life with understanding and with knowledge and with hope. In Jesus' name, be blessed by that word as you receive it. Amen. Now let's just all stand as we pray over that word. It's a word filled with life in it. So Father, we thank you that the hope that was in Christ is the hope we live by today, is the hope that enables us to deal with life as it comes, is the hope that positions us to know this is not the end of the story, whatever we're going through in the earth. But a day is coming when all our hard work, when all our labor, in whichever way we look at it, whether it be keeping our faith alive, whether it be discipling others, whether it be winning souls, whether it be building your ministry work, whether it be saving people and saving our community, whether it be standing and praying for our government and leadership and all the stuff you've called us to do, there is a day of reward for that. It is our hope. And that reward, we leave it already right now because we understand you've called us for it. But this also helps us, oh Father, because of your presence in our lives to even deal with daily issues that challenge us. We know that the contents of our life is the end of our journey. Just as Christ kept his sight clear about where he was going, the Bible says he was able to do with all things. So in Jesus' name, we bless you, Lord, and we thank you as you empower us to walk in this journey to the end of our faith. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen and Amen, and have a great week ahead of you. Amen. Amen.